Hey ladies and gentlemen, today I want to show off my ZT collection a little bit more. I'm here with my buddy. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to go in chronological order. Um, the first ZT I got, I don't have anymore because I traded it. It was a um, ZT 0350TS. So that's a 300 series, smaller liner lock, no frame lock, tiger stripe version. And <clears throat> I liked it a lot, but because I liked it so much, I, I decided that I would get rid of it and get the bigger one, which I eventually did. But alas, here's my first one that I still have today. Okay, this is the Zero Tolerance Talon. Okay, the model number is 750. It's discontinued. It was discontinued when I traded for it. So it was a pretty good deal. Um, pretty nice trade. I don't really use this knife. I don't take it out much because they don't make it anymore. So I would hate to damage it or anything. Um, but here it is. It's the first one, the oldest one I have in my collection right now. <coughs> Liner lock. Talon. This is a PCAL knife for martial arts that uh, uses a reverse inward facing edge grip so it's held in this fashion you can also hold it in karambit grip like this kind of reverse grip edge out very comfortable still because of how slight that curvature is you can hold it in any position really and it's very comfortable um for utilitarian purposes and also for tactical purposes this over here i love this for tactical purposes not having to open a knife use it as a kubaton it's a lot um a lot more of a better option, non-lethality, and things like that. <clears throat> Anyways, so moving on. There's the first one. Oh my gosh, stand it up. Leave it open like this. Looks better. <laughs> I got this one in 2015. It's 2020 now, so... Oh, sorry guys, I guess it's a little bit dirty from the last time I used it. Um, I've had this one for five years now, and I've, used, I've given it pretty hard use. I have not like held back on it too much. I love the stone wash on the on their um titanium parts. <clears throat> but you can see here I dropped it in concrete there. I use this knife a lot. The tip is a little bit um here I'll zoom in a little closer. You can see the tip is a little bit dulled out because it kinda chipped off when I was prying something, so I filed it down, but it looks like it needs a little bit more filing yet. I don't give this knife way too much of a, a attention sharpening it because of how much it's used that it just doesn't last that much anyways. As long as it's got a serviceable edge, I'm good. Smooth, Emerson design, um, <clears throat> got a wave opening and thumb disc here, which it's like, honestly, sometimes that thumb disc, I'd rather just use the wave to flip it open, but sometimes it's, it's not too bad. I like this knife a lot, actually. Um, I have a lot to say about each one of these knives, so I'm not going to get into it too much. I'm just going to kind of go through them all and lay them out over here. All right, next one I got after that one, I did finally acquire after looking for a long time. This is the bigger model of the first one I had, the 350 TS. This is the 303 TS. TS stands for Tiger Stripe. As you can see, the blade is striped like a tiger. This knife is beautiful. It's a tank. Um, I would. I don't think it's discontinued. Um, really. Um, they come and go is what it is. Also, you can use this. Look at this in this close position striking tool. Excellent for that. You got this gear pattern over here, which gives you grip, but also a striking implement. It's great. This is assisted. Unlike the smaller one, you could take the torsion bar out. And you could have a non-assisted knife. And it was very smooth and the detent worked perfectly. This one, if you take the torsion bar out, which I've done already, the detent it does not work. You, you do have a ball detent kind of on the frame here. You can see it right there through the light. But there's no detent hole on the blade, so that doesn't hold the blade in place. What's holding it shut right now is actually that torsion bar pressing on the opposite side over here. And as you flip this down, the torsion bar goes along with the blade. And when it gets past the center point here, it flips it out that way. That's how this works. Look at that. They didn't even open it all the way. And this is what I don't like about the torsion bar. So loud. It just shakes. And it's like... I've taken it apart in the past to put some grease in there, you know, but after some time it always dries up and, you know, it's just kind of like a pain, so. 
This one stays in the bag. This is a grail knife. I haven't used it that much. I give it a little bit of use. It's got some scratches, but very little. Um, I'm gonna keep it fresh because I looked for this knife for a long time and it's, uh, I don't know, I consider it a fancy knife to be using like hard work, using it for hard work purposes or whatever. I'd rather use this guy over here. Moving on, this guy. Zero Tolerance 0801 Titanium. So this is, um, I got this one also, I think, maybe in 2016. So like a little bit after 2017, probably. And this knife I got because I don't have any other frame locks that are silver on silver on silver. And I really like that. I really like this look to it. I feel like it's very, like a formal look. But at the same time, um, you don't have to be in a fancy place. You know, it's not like some, like... I have a couple other knives that it's like are really fancy. I want to just take them like when I'm going out somewhere nice. I don't really want to use them for hard work. This knife you can use for hard work. I've used it for hard work. Beautiful stone wash on there. Um, hides away any scuffs that you're putting on. You're only going to really see like the original ones. You might see some scuffing there. That's probably for me like washing because I've used this knife so many times. Mostly for like food purposes and stuff like that. So it's seen the, the sink and the sponge a couple times. So I mean... Another user knife over here for sure. I love the design of the handle, the looks of this this open construction here. You can see the light shining right through it. Love that knife too. Moving on here, we got this one was another Tiger Stripe model. This one was a sprint run, so that means they made a certain few and then they stopped making them. Uh, I got lucky enough to get one of those. And this is a 0095 Tiger Stripe. Sorry if I don't remember all the names off the top of my head, guys. They're ZTs. They don't have all, all cool, memorable names or numbers a lot of the times. But I did use this knife. I used it, um, but I didn't use it in a way that would have done anything um, that would get it, uh, I don't know, decrease its value, I guess. This pocket clip is very easily scratched. I will say this pocket clip scratched so easy just for me carrying it. I was working at a job where I was um, refurbishing copiers at the time. So this is not like for me like scraping. This is for me just like passing by and like just scraping up against little things, you know. Nothing heavy. I didn't drop it or anything. These other pocket clips that they have are Cerakoted differently. These don't scratch as easily as this one does. Oh, whoa. As this one does, which is also the same kind of material as this one you can see here. The same kind of Cerakote, same kind of scratching. This one I've had longer, so obviously more scratches. But you get a pretty clear picture right here of what's going on with that. So, unfortunately, not as mint condition. Also, if you're a, if you're a guy that likes to spend nice, decent money on your knives and you treat yourself with them, don't be a fool and don't hand them to people that don't really know about them, that cancel the difference between this and like a little $20 or whatever knife that they don't care about. I handed this to somebody that asked me for a knife because they always knew that I had a knife. And as you can see here... I'm going to put it on the, there you go, so you can see that scratch right there. Because I lent it to some fool, man, that decided he was going to open up a clamshell packaging with, like, a set of screwdrivers inside. I literally handed this guy a knife thinking he was about to open, like, a cardboard box, you know, like I was, like, used to doing. I do that a lot, but this one went and, like, stuck it straight into the, the plastic packaging like that and, like, sliced it open. And, like, one of the screwdrivers, like, went and like scratch the Cerakote just a little bit and that's literally one of the only things you can see on the blade I kept it pretty minty besides that so that's a bummer but you know lessons learned if you if you're like working in a environment with other people and you use your knives for work but other people there you know just literally carry an extra knife that you can lend other people because they don't know how to appreciate nice things sometimes <laughs> moving on here we go, we have this one over here. This one I was told many times it looks like a Transformer or a Decepticon, which I think is cool, but I'm not really into Transformers or whatever, but I really thought this was a unique design flipper. That's why I got this one. This one, they uh, discontinued. They stopped making this um, finish, I guess. I got the stone wash finish with the silver handles. They started making instead like an all black one. There's one with like um, designs and patterns here, but... I have this one, which is discontinued, which is cool. The cool thing about that is that it goes up in value. Um, if I can manage to keep it in, in good condition, the longer that it's discontinued, the harder it becomes to find, and obviously the value just increases. Again, another one that I have that's all silver on silver, beautiful look. It uh, kind of um, hides scratches and things like that easier. you got a silver pocket clip here, so it's not going to scratch off like the other ones and, and show those little scratches. 
Um, I carried and used this one lightly, you know, opening boxes and stuff like that, keeping it clean, nothing crazy. It's got a really cool um, inside the handle here. Let's see if I can, if I can get a, a good view. See, it's all hollowed out inside there to make the handle actually much lighter. You see, it's all hollowed, milled out in there. And then I love the look of this blue this blue uh, backspacer in the back. That's just beautiful right there. Beautiful little accent. All right. <clears throat> At the same time as that one, I was lucky enough to be able to get this one too. Um, I don't know if it's discontinued or not, but I know they, start, they started making um, a black one of these, black handle, black carbon fiber handle with a little bit of a black DLC coating on the flat up here. You can see this uh, two-tone finish here. I love a satin grind right next to the right next to the stone wash. That looks good. I like it a lot. This knife is beautiful for slicing things. Super, super light. This is incredibly light. The first thing you think about is uh, how light this knife is when you pick it up. It's just the, this whole carbon fiber build over here with, um, it's not a frame lock. It's called like a, I'm blanking out right now on the name. It's like a mm, insert or something. I don't remember right now. But this is pretty much like screwed onto the inside of the handle here. Let's see if we can get some. There you go. You can see it in there. That sunlight is good. You can see where it's screwed in there. So I wouldn't use this knife. Not like a hard use knife. This is a gentleman's folder. I carry this when I'm dressed up somewhere nice. Um, going to a nice restaurant. You know, if I need a knife, I have something. But I'm not planning on, uh, you know, chopping anything or opening up crazy packages or anything like that. I love the um thumb stud on this thing very unique design made to look like a little um like a six shooter <laughs> in the back here too this unique back spacer i love that they do these things it looks beautiful beautiful knife and then lastly i got this puppy another grail knife i looked for this one for a while because this one is discontinued Oh man, I didn't say the model number of this one, guys. If you don't know the model of this one, this is the 850 Sinkovich and Rexford design. And this puppy over here, the 560 Hinderer design. This is an old discontinued model. You have a different um, over travel stop over here. The, uh, all the new ones have it under the, the titanium over here so that you have a uh, steel on steel contact as opposed to steel on titanium contact you'll see that on all the other ones you see they have the screw here that's because it's holding that insert kind of see it there Let's see if we can see it in these you can see it there where the metal is screwed on and all of these guys are like that this one here, you might be able to see it. Let's see if this one, this one, because it's uncoated. Oh, kind of hard to get that sunlight in there. But anyways, see, they all have a screw here. Before, they used to have that circle here, and the titanium would rub directly up against the steel, but it would make it wear a little bit faster. So they stopped that. They discontinued this one, um, but they did make a smaller version that has that updated... Um, over travel stop which is better in my opinion for wear and tear over time but i had to get this knife because it's bigger and it's beefier and it reminds me of this one a lot big beefy tanky knife much lighter though much lighter this full like titanium side over here on both of them i love the design this is like a like a little diamond shape this one looks like little ridges but this is where all the, the money goes into the knife you're buying. And so this, these parts over here are very um, wearing on the tools that they use to make them. So that's why these are pricey tools because it's not cheap to make. It's very expensive. Um, I believe they go through like a, let's say like a bit, an entire bit, um, just in like making a, a handful of these. They have to change like $100 parts in the machines that they use to make them. So you know, it's justified. Uh, it depends how, I mean, you use your knives. And if you're like a guy that doesn't really use them for stuff like that, you wouldn't really understand. But I mean, if you're a guy like me, like you've had this knife and you've like 
I don't know, we all hard use is a different terminology for all of us. But I've been able to stab this knife into wood, you know, where I was working and just like stick it on my table every time I'm done using it. Stick it on the table every time I'm done using it. Still got really good lockup on here. Um, this is from me, literally, like I was, I was running around outside and it fell out of my pocket and it landed and just bounced around a bunch of concrete. If you're using knives like this, you know, like, yeah, this is a $200 knife, but at the same time, I'm paying for, for the, the comfort in me being able to drop it and not knowing that, oh man, it's, it's a goner, you know, I can, I got good warranty, lifetime warranty against defects, against small accidents and things like that. Obviously, you don't use it like a throwing knife. You don't do things to uh, damage it on purpose, but when you spend money on things like this, you're buying something else along with it, not just, you know, the, the item. You're buying a lifetime warranty. You're buying good materials that are handmade in the U.S. a lot of the times. From what I hear, these knives are hand-sharpened at least, and all the parts are made here in the U.S., and their headquarters are here in the u.s and you know you can call them on the phone and get a hold of them i just i like that I, I like that customer service kind of a feel that you get but anyways um thanks for watching guys